I have been renting a lot of cars to Door Dashers, Uber Eats, and Instacart, and Postmate people. I only have a handful of Uber drivers. And it got me to thinking about the gig economy. Because the gig economy is here with us. I had an Uber driver said he made $6,600 the previous month driving for Uber. And I had a DoorDasher said he made $5,000 doing DoorDash, which comes out to $1,250 a week if you're averaging it out. And I, I kind of feel that the gig economy is going to grow. There's Uber Eats, DoorDash, Instacart, Shipped, Amazon Flex. There's just going to be an army of gig workers because typically, like right now, being a gig worker on the right platform, you can make more doing that than a regular job. I mean, I mean, it, it's just uh, intriguing to look at it because, you know, when I was in that spot where I needed some money, there was no gig work. There was no Uber, there was no Shipped, there was no Amazon Flex, there was none of that, right? And I wonder, would I have been as driven to be where I'm at today if there was some gig work. Because, make no mistake about it, and this is something that's kind of crazy. Um, there are bots. I was watching some uh, Instacart videos, and there are bots that will literally take your batch. And what these people have done is created an organized ring to take the most profitable batches and put them in their little ring and it is it's crazy what is happening they will take the best batches and they have they've they've turned it into a business they've used these bots to snatch batches and then they have their own system and procedures and they're making thousands of dollars a day doing this and the people who are on this because essentially i don't know how instacart works i've never done instacart but i feel there's a vetting process and this gang of instacart bandits call them instacart bandits is i don't think that they have all of those things. I don't think that they have the verification. I don't think that they have um, all the stuff that you need to be an Instacart delivery person. So we've got that going on. And then we have What's going on with Uber? Uber is really, really interesting. If you don't know, I drove for Uber in 2014, seven years ago. Wow, because I wrote a book about Uber because there was, you know, when Uber came out, there was a lot of talk. You could make a lot of money being an Uber driver. So I drove and my conclusion was Uber could be a job, but it wasn't going to be, quote, a side hustle. You had to treat it like a job to really make money. And that was my conclusion. And that conclusion still bears out to this day. But essentially, gig work, because I want you to think, Amazon Relay, where if you have a box truck, you can run loads for Amazon, is kind of like gig work. It's kind of like gig work. So I fully expect this to proliferate 
going forward. I fully expect to see a lot more gig work. And the reason why is you're an independent contractor. You're not an employee. They don't have to pay payroll taxes on you. They don't, you know, they move all of that to the gig worker because um, I saw someone who actually kind of made some errors because I am paying myself $30,000 a month out of my business and my taxes are about 10K. They used to be higher, but once again, once you get to a certain limit, they stop taking social security out because social security is only gonna give you so much. So I'm pretty much getting 20 out of the 30. So they're taking $5,000 each pay period. And uh, he was doing his calculations and he has said, you know, 30,000, they would take 40%. They're not taking 40%, they're taking 29%. But once again, that's neither here nor there. But essentially, if you are a gig worker, because this, this is what I'm starting to see. Um, in my car rental business that is renting to gig workers, what I am seeing is they rent cars. I have a few who rent by the week, but the majority of them rent by the day. Because um, in July, I'm gonna be able to get a firm grasp upon what I will earn per day. But I've noticed this because many, I know for a fact that Uber pays out daily. McDonald's pays out daily. I don't know if TaskRabbit, or I don't, I don't know how these other apps work. Um, but, you're gonna see a lot more of this. You're gonna see probably some other company that's gonna to come to the marketplace with some type of gig work because this is one of the reasons that millennials are broke. Millennials are not buying cars right now. Millennials are not buying houses. You wanna know what? They don't have no money. They don't have no money. It's not a seriously, um, hard thing to figure out because millennials are probably the brokest generation that we've ha ever had so far the brokest generation and also millennials are finicky there was a girl millennial who's a pilot and she got her pilot job and you know why she quit because she had to work too much she quit because she had to work too much a six-figure job. She quit because she had to work too much. So millennials are a very finicky, um, sensitive. They're like, I'm not going to work my whole life slaving away at this job. I need my benefits. I need my time off. I need my time with my friends and family, which isn't a bad thing. However, one of the big issues is with millennials is that they don't understand that the game is stacked against them. Yeah, you can quit your job. All of you can just quit your jobs because essentially, uh, I had a doctor's appointment recently and I noticed um, the doctor's staff had changed. And I was asking them about, you know, staff because, you know, he said they were having an terribly time finding, uh, they had a position open for six months and they just can't find anyone for this position. And essentially take the millennials and take the um, government prop up movement with this free government money and you, you put this all in the pot together and you've got some nasty consequences coming because essentially this is one of the points that I try to get across on Savage Finance. To build up money, it's gonna take time, effort, and stress. And the millennials are looking for a stress-free, cause like, one of the reasons that I hear from these guys who are doing DoorDash is that DoorDash is easier. DoorDash is easier than Uber. And I consistently hear this, and also, a guy who was doing Uber, he was like, he was thinking about stepping away because Uber drivers are being assaulted. He actually knows of two cases where 
An Uber driver got shot in the head by a disgruntled passenger. Shot in the head. And another one got beat up. And I'm just sitting there like, now I only drove for Uber for six weeks. And I had a drunk Frenchman who I had to put out of the car. But I, I wonder if I had driven for years, what I would have come across, you know? But gig work, it, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. I fully expect to see these apps. Um, and many of these people who are doing gig work don't understand that they have a business. They should have their, whatever gig work they're doing. Like when I did Uber, I signed up under my LLC. They should be signed up under an LLC. They should have a business credit card for their Uber. Why should you have a business credit card? You got oil change. You got gas. You got a lot of expenses that you should have a rewards business credit card for so you can get more for your money. And you should be set up like a business. And you should be really doing that. And I, I seriously doubt that the majority of the Uber drivers, the door dashers, I don't know how door dash works. Um, if I wasn't so busy, I would sign up for it just to see how it works, but I, I don't have the time. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand, this is the future. This is the future. Contractors, 1099, gig workers are the future. More and more companies are going to because essentially, let's say a company hires you as a gig worker. They instantly save 15%. Or let's say 7%. They save 7% plus benefits plus they could they could probably save 25% by hiring you as a gig worker. 25% spread across a hundred employees is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So we're gonna see more Amazon relays, we're gonna see more Uber Eats, we're gonna see all of this. And there needs to be, if there isn't, I haven't researched it yet, so I don't know, but there needs to be a gig worker accountant to help these guys maximize their money and make sure they're getting all the deductions that they they're earned, they that they deserve, right? Because um, I, I'm just noticing this. Hire car, which was established in 2014, mostly serves gig workers. And they told me that there's 2,000 registered drivers in Georgia. 2,000. And there's one, two, three, three big players who have like, I think they have hundreds of cars, three big players on the platform in Georgia. And um, essentially there is so much demand that, you know, cause the guy, he, he kind of alluded to like one of the whales was doing like 200 K a month. And, um, this was a corporation, no doubt about it. And I'm just looking at the future because essentially one of the positives of gig work is if you can get a car, you can make some money instantly. And that didn't exist when I was going through it. So if you, I, I want you to really think about this. If you are somebody who wants to work and you, you don't have a car, and it's like your, your barrier to making money is getting a car. Go to hire a car, rent out a car, and boom, you're making money. You're making money. And right now, there is this weird thing going on with Uber and Lyft where a lot of people don't want to drive because they have options. They don't have to drive for Uber or Lyft. They can drive for DoorDash, Uber Eats, Instacart. 
and many of the gig workers are multi-apping. They're, they've got Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Instacart open all at the same time. So it's like, all right, I'm gonna go do this Instacart run. Then they do the Instacart run, then oh, I'm gonna do some Uber Eats. And then essentially, you got people who are fully embracing the gig work. There was a guy, Google it, the guy did Uber Eats for 30 days straight, 12 hours a day. He made $8,000. Now, I want you to, to work with me on this. Let's say you wanted to do something and you wanted to raise $4,000 really quickly. There it is. Because $8,000, you know, minus your gas, and he, he actually did a really good job on the video. He was spending an average of $20 a day on gas. So gas cost him about 600 bucks for the month. So subtract that 600 bucks from the 8,000, still $7,400. That's really good money for just driving around and dropping off food. Now he did it 12 hours a day. He did it seven days a week. He, did, he went hard. He went hard in the paint. But right now, there is no excuse for you to be broke in America. Unless you live out in East Abuga, Timbuktu, somewhere out in the boonies okay i got I, I feel you but if you're living in a metropolitan city or close to one there is no excuse for you to be broke none none you're broke because you want to be broke you're broke because you don't want to work because uh i was watching some videos with um they were talking about the summer is slow and typically, this is how it goes. When I was in the storage auction business, the prices of inventory would dramatically drop because it slowed down, right? But if you knew what to do, you could dance between the raindrops because I was making just as much money during the summer as I was during the winter. And you wanna know why? Because I had multiple selling platforms, selling on eBay, selling on Amazon, selling on Craigslist. I had my upscale garage sale. So I had four revenue streams, well actually five. We were putting books on Amazon. That was totally separate. So we had five revenue streams and you know, we, we were making it do what it do. But gig work is the future of America because these corporations can use you and not have to pay employment taxes, not have to pay benefits, not have to pay 401k. They could be saving 30% off the top right there because that 30% is just the cost of having you as an employee. Like I have an employee that I pay per hour and you know, I have to pay payroll taxes. Uh, at some point, we're going to do an insurance policy. And, you know, and it makes me think in the future because I'm rethinking the airport facility because I'm finding more and more um, Turo hosts who have found a place close to the airport and they have contactless delivery. Essentially, you go to the car and there's a lockbox on the car with the key in the lockbox. So you could, and I, I really see the benefit of that because I'm going to explore that a lot more in the future because I might be able to jumpstart my Turo thing by getting close to the airport because I'm, I'm here to tell you. Now, also, pricing works really well on Turo. I've already got one renter for Turo, she drops it off tomorrow. Another one's already booked for Friday through Monday, and I got a third guy trying to book it. So that pricing is pulling people out. And I'm running an experiment to see if the, my pricing, because essentially I, I've already got the price set for this month. The price is 95 bucks a day. This month, then it goes up a little bit next month, then it goes up a little bit uh, the month after that. 
and already because essentially I did that to keep someone from booking in you know like six months into the future at this low price so I went in and I manually adjusted the price so we will see if that works because if that works that's going to give me a template for my next Toro car which you know it, it just kind of really depends but right now with the gig workers um we have a lot of options if you're a young person with a car you have a lot of options and when they were um giving me my presentation for hire car because i signed up for hire car for business 30 percent of the people who sign up for uber or lyft don't have a qualifying car 30 percent so i feel that this is going to be quite the business for years to come especially when I go to the buy here, pay here. Because I will have a, a pool of people, because essentially once someone rents a car from you, they show up in your past rental tab, and I, I, I'll have the ability to contact them or, or you know take their phone number and reach out to them and say, hey, you know, I got a buy here, pay here. The buy here, pay here is a year out. It's a year out at least. Um, because one of the things is, like with the gig work, you drive, you make money, right? I make more money renting out cars than I do selling cars. Like, give you an example. I got a Camry, right? The Camry, I think, is close to me $2,000. And I've only had this Camry six going on seven weeks. Now, if I was making payments if I sold that Camry to someone and say hey give me a thousand dollars down all right so that's seven thousand then give me four hundred bucks a month for two years so it would take me two years to make money on that car the first year would be four hundred forty eight hundred so forty eight hundred plus the thousand that's fifty eight hundred I'm still in the hole so about in the second year, about month six, month six to 12 of the second year, that's when I would be making a profit. If I sold the car and just took a thousand dollars down. But I still have the cost of buying the car. So that's why essentially I'm gonna do, because essentially this is the reason I'm getting my dealer's license is I'm gonna have to sell a bunch of cars. You know, because essentially I'm going to refresh the fleet, refresh the fleet. And part of this is what I'm seeing is that week that I bought five cars for 4100 bucks. It was a good week and it was a bad week. Uh, those cars, like part of that was an Acura with the battery died. Part of that and all the tags for those cars started flying off. That was problematic. Um, I'm realizing that I'm going to have to buy a more expensive car. And this is why the buy here, pay here is like a month out. Because essentially, for me to scale up, I would have to invest more money in the business, like a million. I would have to invest $700,000 more in this business and... I don't like that math. I didn't like that math. Like the 300K and get my 300K back within 22 months, about 22, 25, when I say get my 300K back, about month 14, I'll start pulling money out. And by the 25th month or sooner, depending on how things go, I would have got my original $300, $300,000 investment back and just, the business is supporting itself and it's just making cash. And that can happen much quicker with an infusion of 300,000 than it can with an infusion of a million because the bigger, more, the more money I put into it, the longer time it takes for me to balance out. And I haven't run the numbers on the million. And also, what I'm gonna do is 
I'm gonna see what happens with Wells Fargo and that secured credit card because I've had that secured credit card 10 months and I'm kicking myself because I should have been building business credit years ago. I just didn't do it. I just didn't do it. So one of the things that you know I'm trying to show you guys is building business credit takes time to build real robust business credit. So we will see what will happen when we get to that point. Um, we will see. But I feel that there's a lot more room since there's so many people who are going to be moving to the gig economy. And this is one of the reasons I think the buy here, pay here is going to be such a hit because most of these people are not set up professionally. A lot of them are not paying taxes. They just out here riding dirty, <laughs> riding dirty. And they're not going to be able to finance anything because it's going to be hard to approve their income. So essentially, ideally, if you had a gig worker who was really rolling, they would put themselves on payroll and give themselves a, 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 a pay stub in a W-2. And this would solve all financing problems. Like when I, you know, when I financed the Mercedes, you know what they asked for? Proof of income. I didn't even get into this. I'm self-employed. I just like, oh, here's my pay stub. Boom. 225K is what we can finance you for based on that pay stub. So we're, we're going to be talking about pay stub gain because um, that's going to open up many, many doors for you having to pay stuff. Like uh, when I rent this apartment, uh, AKA penthouse, they're gonna ask for proof of income. Bam, here's the pay stuff. First time in years, cause you know how I've been getting around that is just showing bank statements with a lot of cash in the bank. And they're like, oh, all right, we'll, 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 we'll work with you. Now I got a pay stuff. <clears throat> so we're gonna be talking about that and some other things that you guys need to do. All right. Let's see. All right. Highway is a trip. So we'll, we'll be <clears throat> talking about that and some other stuff because I might do some gig worker tutorials because what you need to do is work like a maniac if you're a gig worker. First of all, I can tell you from my time of doing gig work, you cannot drive when you want to. You have to drive when people are using the app. And this guy did this uh, 30 day challenge. Well, 30 days, he made $8,000. Um, he, he made the most money, lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner. You have to drive when people are hungry, not when you want to. Now, Instacart, I don't know how that works. Once again, I don't really know how that works. But um, essentially, I may start doing some tutorials on gig work. Even though I'm not a gig worker, I can tell people how to frame up their situation. Because there's a lot of gig workers out there, they're riding dirty, they're not filing taxes, they're spending all their money. They're, they don't have um, their things appropriately partitioned. Uh, like the guy who did 6,300 bucks. He should be putting himself on the pay, you know, paying himself like, you know, 2,500 bucks a month or maybe $3,000 a month, paying his taxes because they'll come out of his check. And that way at the end of the year, he won't have this nightmare that I feel that a lot of gig workers are going to have. A lot of gig workers are going to be in the danger zone because um, they're not filing taxes and at some point that's going to catch up with them. At some point that's going to catch up with them. So I may start doing some gig worker tutorials and stuff like this. It's really interesting. Um, I got a lady who's renting the car for me tomorrow. She came from Chicago and she wanted to use her Chicago car to drive for Uber, 
and Uber told her she could not use that car. And I'm not thinking, it's like, well, you move here, why don't you just switch over your registration, right? You, you're supposed to. But there, there's more to the story. There, there's always more to the story. So we will be doing some more exposés on the gig work. Because if you notice, there's a lot of YouTube videos on DoorDash. There's a lot of videos about uh, Instagram, not Inst Instacart. There's a lot of videos about Uber Eats because people are looking for ways to make money quick. And I know Uber Eats, I know Uber does daily pay. I don't know if Uber Eats does daily pay. I'm pretty sure it does. So if you roll out and you make 200 bucks in one day, it's 200 bucks in your pocket instantly, you know? So it's, it's, it's quite interesting, this gig economy. And, you know, many, many people are multi-gigging and they're just trying to get the money and they're not really becoming technicians of their craft because um, essentially it didn't take me long to figure out how to maximize Uber. You gotta get up at four o'clock in the morning from four to 10, do those airport runs. I would get two to three airport runs a day. That made it the majority of, my, of the money I was doing for Uber. And I figured out where to park. So one of the things, and I think that that's what's happening. Cause like I said, I've watched just a few Instacart, Uber Eats and DoorDash uh, videos. But I think DoorDash, Uber Eats, uh, Instacart are here to stay. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So it's like 8.30, you want some McDonald's, but it's raining, it's nasty outside, you don't want to go outside, Uber Eats. Boom, boom, boom. There's someone out there to do it. And interestingly enough, um, there are Uber drivers and Lyft drivers riding around in the middle of the night. Like, uh, there was someone at my house who, who doesn't like to drive, and it was like 1.30, and she wanted to go home, and she called a lift 15 minutes later using my driveway. I was just like, so this gig economy is real. I think this gig economy is going to be 24-7. I think you got the folks, the hustlers, the hustlers out there are going to be making that money. You're going to be making that money. You're going to be making that money. And I feel that this is an opportunity for someone who wants to earn money. Now, I got a girl in the BMW. I'm probably going to have to dehorse her because she lost her job. And, you know, she's been And I want to sell the BMW. That's another thing. I was hoping to get the title today, probably get the title next week. And as soon as I get that title, I'm taking that BMW to a dealer and I'm going to get two cars for that one BMW. And like I said, I got a better little plan. I'll, I'll be talking about that a little bit more. But with this gig work, it, it is, like I said, you know, I'm being repetitive. It's the future. It's the future, man. This ain't going nowhere. And if you are a gig worker, leave a comment in the um, comment section like, how has gig work worked for you? Do you like doing gig work? Is it cool? Because like the dude who said he made $5,000 doing DoorDash, he was a laid back dude. And that was just like, you know, and I don't think that this is going to go away anytime soon. DoorDash, like when the pandemic, at the height of the pandemic, I had developed a very mean DoorDash habit. I was ordering from, I was ordering this little fish dish from um, the Cheesecake Factory like every other day. And then there was some other restaurants I was ordering because I'm like, I didn't feel like going out and getting it. And you know, and that was before I started doing alternate day fasting. But it's convenient, man. It's just so convenient. So I don't really see this disappearing or going away anytime soon anytime soon. If anything, I see this growing. 
I see this becoming even bigger. I see there will be more DoorDashers, more Instacart people, because I want you to think about it. Let's say you're a single mom. Well, no, let's say you're a stay-at-home mom. You have a husband who's working and you have three kids. And if you can, for just a few dollars, have someone go do the grocery shopping, and that's one less thing you have to do. I see that as a big, big thing. Because I was talking to these door dashers. Well, I wasn't talking. I was watching a video. And there are people who are doing $100 Instacart order, orders. Uh, 150 250 And that sounds like stay-at-home mom with multiple kids, family. And if you could just have someone go out and do your shopping for you, and you don't have to worry about that, I can just see that as super, super convenient. And like I said, I don't see that going nowhere. I don't see that going nowhere. Nowhere at all. So, one of the things that we're going to see is our society shifts because we're going to have people who are going to be part of the socialist sect. They're, you know, like, I, I'm just waiting on universal basic income. I'm just waiting on the form of UBI to come out of this democratic um, govern, governing body. And then we're going to have a group of people who want to hustle, who want to make some money. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to American society in the next two years. I think these next two years are going to be pivotal because you can be part of the socialist sex in the home getting a check. You can be part of the hustling sect, gig worker, or you can be part of the business class sect, creating products and services for the socialist sect and the gig workers. I feel that there's going to be millions of dollars creating products and services for gig workers. Um, and because like with Hire Car, because one of my uh, concerns was, is Hire Car saturated? And it ain't even saturated because um, I don't even think there are 2,000 cars on hire car at the moment. And there's 2,000 registered drivers with more signing up the platform every day. So I feel that there's, you know, because I was thinking at next August, not this coming August, but next August, I am looking at having 100 cars. And I only have 21 right now, so we're gonna add 79 more, right? And with, there's 2,000 registered drivers on the platform right now, and there are not 2,000 cars on the platform. So I have a lot of room to grow, and in the future, I'm going to have a two-row fleet, and I'm gonna have a, um, Hire car fleet, different customer, different kind of car, different kind of experience. So just give me a little time to roll off that because once I get my rental income up to 100K, I may go ahead and just buy four Turo cars because that's $25,000. $25,000 gets you a pretty nice used car. And then I can buy four cars and then I can have four cars on Turo as a commercial host, and we will see. You know, it's just a matter of time, because uh, these next two months, I'm kind of looking forward to shifting around the fleet, um, getting out of these SUVs, and then going into um, just cars. And I will bring the SUVs back for Turo, because it's a different kind of client. I, fun fact, I got someone in Florida who thinks I'm gonna deliver the Mercedes to a Florida address and I'm in Atlanta. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, they ain't gonna work. I'm declining that because it would cost me more to get the car to him and then for me to get back, then I'm, I'm like, you're, we're in Atlanta. I, I don't know what, because the delivery address is in Florida. And I'm like, uh, they ain't happening. They ain't happening, man. They ain't happening. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.